okay, so let me start by saying that um, I'm going to be speaking a lot. We'll have opportunities for questions um, right before we take the break at 2 p.m. for 10, 15 minutes, and then 10, 15 minutes before we end at 3 o'clock. So I want to make sure that you have a pen and paper handy because you want, you want to take notes. And uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff. And I think the recording will be available. But either way, it's, you always absorb the material so much better as you're taking notes. So handling objections to close like a mega agent. The first thing I have the little agenda, the things I'm supposed to be talking about today. The first one, the first thing that I want to talk to you about is how do we lead generate for listings? I have no doubt in my mind that every real estate agent wants to be a listing agent. There are very few that say, oh, I just want to work with buyers. I mean, I think agents end up working with buyers because they're unable to actually take a lot of listings consistently. And there's a way to do that. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. So how do we lead generate for listings? When you think about all the different ways that you can find business, what I like to talk to my clients about all the time is being proactive, not reactive, not sitting around and waiting for someone to reach out to you and, and say, oh, I want to sell my house. Obviously, you are working your database. There's no question about that. Your past client's fear of influence is a gold mine, and you should be constantly and continuously in touch with your database so you can get repeat and referral business. But that is not what I'm going to talk about today. Today, I'm going to talk about lead generating for listings by actually speaking with people that you don't know. No matter how big your database is, and I, I, I believe I've asked this question to several leaders like Jackie and, and, and not only team leaders, but OPs and, and agents um, that are in management positions. The average real estate agent has maybe three, 400 people in their database. If you're here today and you're a new newer or fairly new agent. You might have under 100 people that you know. You don't have a lot of past clients because you're new to real estate. So when you think about who's my sphere of influence so I can let them know I'm in real estate, ask for referrals, stay in touch on a regular basis, it's a very small number of people compared to the number of people in your marketplace that you don't know that are potentially selling their homes and listing their homes on a daily basis. And when I say potentially, I mean, it's, it's not potential, it's actual. There are, depending on the market you're in, hundreds of people every day listing their homes for sale. It is happening. Okay, if you're in a very small market, it might be a smaller number. Either way, regardless of how many, there is, and I want you to write this down because this is really important. So how do you gen lead generate for listings? There is someone in your marketplace that's going to list their home today and tomorrow. Every day, there's at least one. And here's my proposal to you. If you talk to enough people, which is what lead generation is about. What are we talking about when we say lead generate? You've got to look for people that want to sell. You don't lead generate for buyers. You don't need to because when you have enough listings, the buyers just come as a result of the listings that you have. So Lead generating for listings requires you to talk to people you don't know because the number of people you know is limited. You're not going to, if you have a few hundred people in your database and you, you're, you're speaking with them once per quarter, you're sending out newsletters, you're, you're doing other things to actually communicate with them on a regular basis. 
You're not going to be talking to them every week and saying, oh, I'm in real estate, by the way. Do you know anyone? And do you know what's happening with the market? It would be overwhelmed. It would be too much. So you are, unless you have a database, you've been in real estate for many years and you have a database of thousands of people and it's generating a lot of business. I've actually coached, I have coached agents. I had one client several years ago, a great agent selling about 150 homes a year. And he, he had 7,000 people in his database. Been in real estate for 20 years, a lot of past clients, a lot of sphere of influence. But when you think about it, to have 7,000 people and close 150 transactions, and he did lead generate for listings, calling people he didn't know. So the amount of business he was getting from his database was really not very much. So obviously working your database is something that you're doing outside of what I'm gonna talk to you about today. You gotta lead generate. You have to talk to people you don't know. Now, agents for the most part resist that conversation. Why? Because it's a lot, it's comfortable and it's nice to talk to people you know. The people that you know are not likely to give you a lot of objections. I mean, the title of this class is Handling Objections. Your friends and your past clients and your relatives and the people you know, they're not likely to give you a lot of objections. Like, um, I have a friend in real estate. I don't want to pay a commission. I'm not selling anymore. These are feasible and expired objections. You do know that. Or, oh, there's a neighborhood specialist. Could somebody you know give you an objection? Yes, but it's not likely. You don't, you, you don't expect to hear a lot of objections every time you talk to them. When you speak with people you don't know, especially the, the ones that want to sell, Namely, Fizbo's and expires. I mean, look, I know a lot of agents like, oh my gosh, is that what this class is about? No, it's not what it's about. This is about handling objections and closing like a mega agent. But when we talk about handling objections, we cannot not talk about expires and Fizbo's because that is who you're going to talk to, that you will get the most objections. And the great thing about expires and Fizbo's is that they are, and I want you to write this down so you don't forget, the hottest prospects that you can talk to. Why? Because they want to sell. The purpose of lead generating is to find someone who wants to sell so you could set a listing appointment and go out and take a listing. That's the purpose of it. And so when you think about it, you have different people you could be talking to. You could call around the neighborhood. You could circle prospect, uh, a geographic area. And you, I did that for my first two years in real estate, massive amounts of circle prospecting. I did call Fizbos and Expires from the very beginning, although I had no idea what I was doing, but I was still calling. But I I was talking to about 400 people a week and the majority of them were circle prospecting calls. And those are great calls. I don't, I'm not opposed to those, but, and they're easier, much easier than FISBOs and expireds. But you're going to have to talk to probably hundreds of people to find one that wants to sell right now, not next month, not in six months, not in two years. They want to sell today. For you to find someone who wants to sell today, that you can set an appointment right now, go out and list a home today, it will take hundreds of, of conversations uh, if you're circle prospecting. Whereas when you call FISBOs and expireds, it's almost one-to-one. -one. FISBOs are one-to-one -one because a for sale by owner you're not going to call to find out if they want to sell. No, no, no. They're selling. They may say, they may sound unmotivated, like, yeah, no, you know, I'm not in a hurry. I'm just, you know, I got, they sound unmotivated, but their house is for sale. And I always say people in their right state of mind don't put their house up for sale because they got nothing better to do on a Monday morning. 
Okay. So I, no matter what they say to you, it's a smoke screen. Okay. Now, so for sale bonders one-to-one, everyone you talk to, they want to sell. All you have to do is convince them to do it with you. Expireds. 40 to 50% of expired listings relist their home within 72 hours. Think about that. Think about the incredible opportunity. Another 25, 30% relist within two to three weeks. And then there's a small percentage that just decide they're not selling right now. They're going to leave the house off the market. Okay. It's still, there's a, a high percentage that are listing the home right now. 80% of the expireds I listed, this is starting my third year. That's when I really started to feel like I kind of knew what I was doing. Not really, but, you know, feeling a little better about the whole process of, of, of lead generation. Starting my third year, 80% of the expired listings that I took were same day call in the morning, set an appointment for that afternoon, go out and list it. So I want to talk about mindset a little bit here because when I say stuff like what I just said, some of you may say, well, that hasn't been my experience and I don't think that's even possible. And wow, that's a really high percentage same day. It is possible because I've done it and I have a lot of clients that do it too, not, not even just now over the years because I've been coaching agents and training agents on Fizbos and Expireds for 15 years now. For MAPS coaching, I had a program called Dominate Your Market. It was a Fizbo and Expired program and there were a lot of clients that took that program. I, I think I did it for five, six years, I don't know, for a long time and prior to that for another coaching company as well physicals and expired. So there's no question that that is happening. Okay. So if you're sitting there thinking, well, I don't think so. Well, they're still going to list the home and they're going to list same day. They're just not going to do it with you because if you don't believe it, if you don't believe it's possible for you, then it's not going to happen because whatever you, whatever you um, what you focus on expands, you get what you expect. And if your expectation when you're lead generating is, well, um, I, I know I'm just going to end up with a bunch of leads because I know, you know, expires. Uh, yeah, they don't, they don't list right away like that. I'm going to have to follow up. And Fizbos, are you kidding me? They're going to take a month or even two months before they list with an agent. Well, then guess what? You're going to make calls. You're going to end up with a bunch of leads. And you're going to learn like I did, because when I started in real estate, it wasn't just that that was 25 years ago, 1996. So it wasn't that I did. I mean, I, I didn't even like this conversation of mindset and what I believe I used to. I, I remember the first time I heard about the, just the word mindset. I didn't even know what it meant. Like, what do you mean? And then I remember hearing um, Earl Nightingale's The Strangest Secret, which is a great book, by the way. You become what you think about most of the time. I'm like, what? Like, how does what I think have anything to do with my life situation, my services? That's, 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 that makes no sense. So I didn't really not believe it. I just, it wasn't my focus at all. I'm just like making calls, trying to find somebody who wants to sell. But the point is, I experienced, and you will experience this too. If you expect, that there, when you call expireds and for sale by owners, you're not going to be able to set an appointment on the first call and you're going to have to follow up for weeks or months, then that's exactly what's going to happen. Why? And I want you to pay attention to what I'm going to say right now, because like th that, this could like shift everything in your, in your mind and your business. Okay. Why? Because Fizbos and expireds are going to give you objections, a lot of objections. And when you get on this call and they say, let's, let's go with a Fizbo objection. No, I don't want to pay a commission. I just started. I'm getting a lot of activity. It's a hot, it's a hot market. I, I can sell it myself. Since you're expecting that you're going to have to follow up, 
the first objection they give you, you say, oh, okay. So, um, you know, would it be okay if I can preview your home just in case? So would you cooperate with an agent if I have a buyer? Right there. Your, your intention, if you ever had the intention of setting a listing appointment, it's just gone, gone down the drain. Right now you're having a completely different conversation. You bought into the objection. You're like, um, there's something called a confirmation bias, right? So you get on the call, you're expecting that you're gonna get leads. They give you an objection and say, no, I don't wanna list with an agent right now. I don't wanna pay a commission. I got it, I'm getting a lot of activity. They're confirming what you already believe before you dial the phone, which is they're not gonna give me an appointment today and I'm gonna have to follow up. And so you buy into it and you say, oh, okay, well, if I have a buyer, you, conversation is done. It's, it's gone in a different direction and that's it. That's all you get. So mindset is everything. I don't believe mindset is 90%. Mindset is everything. It's all of it. Because you need to start lead generating for appointments. You got to quit lead generating to, wow, that's weird. You got to quit lead generating for leads, for to make contacts, to put in two or three hours of lead generation. What's the point of that? Is that why you are lead generating every day? No. Your intention is to set appointments. That's a mindset. Now, how do you lead generate? Well, you could door knock, you could call people. Those are the, the proactive ways, right? Not sitting and waiting and, and buying leads and expecting internet leads. We're talking about you actively looking for people who want to sell their homes you you so the options really are you you door knock you you call you can go into like random businesses and talk to people and pass out business cards not very effective i mean, why would you do that and not go directly to the people that you know want to sell who are they Fizbos and expires. Oh, I, I will circle prospect for three hours and talk to random people and talk to hundreds of people, but I will not call the people that I know are selling. That makes no sense. I personally like lead generating over the phone because it's more efficient. You get to talk to more people in a less time. That's what efficiency is. As if you go door knocking Fizbos and expires, I'm not opposed to that, but I I believe that in the morning, you should be lead generating for three hours before noon. From nine to noon, you're on the phone making calls. And if you don't have appointments to go on in the afternoon, then you go door knocking. And then you create a route. And you could go directly to Fizbos and Expireds. You could even door knock some of the people you spoke with in the morning that you weren't able to set an appointment with. You could go door knock. Oh, I was in the area. I thought I'd stop by and you just spoke with them. But getting out there in the afternoon just to change it up a little bit, right? In the, in the morning, you're on the phone. In the afternoon, you go door knocking. But the phone is obviously more efficient. So... I'm going to give you four steps to handling objections over the phone and five steps to handling objections in person when you're on listing appointments. But before I do that, I want to differentiate for you. What is an objection and what is a condition? A condition, we... Um, define it as uh, a statement of a fact that you can do nothing about. It doesn't matter what you say and how you say it and what you do. This is how it is. And nothing you, nothing you do or say is going to change it. Okay. So when you, when you call expireds and FISBOs and you hear a lot of objections, should you be worried about, is this a condition or an objection? No. And here's why. And write this down because this is important. You should always, always 100% of the time, assume that whatever they're saying is an objection. An objection 
so differentiating from the condition. An objection is just, it's a question. They're, they're, they're asking you a question. I define an objection in a couple of different ways. Um, it is a question. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for you to say something that's going to cause this seller to feel like, hmm, no, maybe, maybe there's something here that I should be, that I should pay attention to. It's there. So, so in essence, always assuming it is an objection, because what's, what's the other option? Assume it's a condition, well, condition, there's nothing you can do. So then, okay, uh, have a nice day, click. What's the point of that? So I don't care what they say. Um, here's an example. And I know you know the right answer to this. If they say I have a friend in real estate, is that a condition or an objection? It's an objection. But, you know, they maybe, you know, like what if they say, well, my mother is a real estate agent. And if I am going to use an agent, I, you know, I'm going to list with my mother or my brother, you know, a close relative. Is that a condition or an objection? It's an objection. Now, is it possible? Could it be a condition? Meaning, I don't, no matter what you say, they're going to listen with their mother. Of course it could be. But if I, when they say it, if I assume that it is a condition, then I'm done. It's like I'm throwing in the towel. It's like, oh, okay, well, you know, yeah, it's your mom. Good luck. What's the point of that? You, so always assuming that it is an objection you, your mindset is that you're, you're gonna, you're gonna go all out. You're gonna, you're not gonna take no for an answer when a yes is still possible. I'm gonna give you some objection handlers. Okay. Once, once we go through the four steps, I'm gonna give you some, like, show you how you would handle something like this. So, I gave you the difference between condition and objection, but I want you to forget that objections exist. Uh, conditions exist. It's always an objection, period. So the four steps to handling objections over the phone. I love this so much. It's like one of my favorite things to talk about. So I, I want you to write down hmm, point number one. And point number one is so, it sounds so easy and so simple. And honestly, it is the most important of the four points. And that is listen intently. So write that down. And this is very different than what most uh, agents do. Think about the tendency that you have when you're on the phone with a Fisbor and expired and, you know, they're not really like very happy people. Like they're not thrilled to like, oh my goodness, I'm Jackie. I'm so happy you call. No, they're like giving you objections. They're not interested. So now they say, oh, I'm, I'm going to release with the same agent. In that moment, the tendency is to start talking. That's what I used to do when I didn't know better, like throw the entire kitchen sink at them, whatever comes to my little, 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 little. That's not what you're supposed to be doing at all. There's a quote that I love that says, luck happens when preparation meets opportunity. So when you're on the phone with someone who wants to sell, there's an opportunity here for you to set a listing appointment, go out and take a listing. And this opportunity, let's say your average commission is $10,000. Every single FISBO and expired call that you make, you could potentially make $10,000 if you're able to set an appointment, go out, take a well-priced listing. So there's a huge opportunity there. The question is, are you prepared to be able to take advantage of that opportunity? So in the moment when you hear an objection, 
that's not the time to be worried about oh, what am I gonna say? What do I where's that objection? And you're flipping through papers and looking. You should have the objections in front of you. Objection handlers and scripts, and you should have that in front of you because you could reference it. But when they when in the moment when they give you that objection, if you're preoccupied with, well, what is it again? What am I supposed to? you're already lost, okay? That's, you either prepared or you're not. So right in that moment, you might as well just be present. I believe that your ability to focus in the moment is one of the most important things you have to learn how to do. Where we live in an era of endless distractions and Lead generation is one of those things that, you know, you're prospecting, you're dialing the phone, you dial 10 people, they don't answer, two wrong numbers, one hung up on you. Like after five minutes, 10 minutes of that, I know because it used to happen to me, I'm in a prospecting coma. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're just like, I am in la la land. I'm not even there. And like, Dialing, I'm, do, I'm thinking of something else and I'm checking the phone. It's, you're not focused. You're not present. So now this FISBO expired who potentially can be a $10,000 commission for you. Answer the phone. Hello? And you're like, uh, you don't know who you're talking to. And now you, oh, here's a script. You, you read the script. And then they say, no, I'm going to release with the same agent. And then I, 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 I how can you expect to get results when that's, that, listen, mega agents that understand listings is the name of the game. That's what, there's no, there are no great agents out there that are focused on looking for buyers. Buyers automatically come as a result of the listings that you have. They understand the importance of being focused because otherwise you're just, flushing $10,000 down the toilet every time somebody answers the phone. Actually, you're not doing that. Uh, they're going to end up placing the property with someone. It's just not, not going to be you. It's going to be in somebody else's bank account, not yours. So you have to figure out how to be focused. When you hear an objection, I trust that you prepare and you practice and you role play and you do all the things you need to do to improve your skills, but right now, listen intently. Don't, I have a tendency when I was used to prospect and now I still once in a while prospect. By the way, you can go on YouTube and search my channel, Jackie Kravitz. There, there are a few live for sale by owner calls that I made in the last couple of months, right here in my area. I dialed, it's on speaker and you're gonna hear me talk to them and set an appointment. And I don't do that on these videos. I was going to say, I have a tendency when I'm on the phone with someone, sometimes I close my eyes because I don't want, I don't even want to see like what's around me to distract me. I'm so focused and present in this conversation that that's sometimes what I do. You have to develop the ability to focus on your, your, the task at hand, you have the ability to do that. You've got to just discipline yourself. So now you listen intently so you can do step two, which is repeat and massively approve what they said. What they said, not just say some scripts have approval words, right? There's a question and then it says, great. Fantastic. Excellent. That's, that's totally ineffective. In order for you to repeat and approve, and I'm going to explain to you the reason why this is so important. Step number three and four that's coming up, I'll tell you in a minute. That's where you're going to really sort of engage them and close for the appointment. But for you to be able to get a yes when you ask for the appointment, they need to be open-minded and listening to you when you speak. 
and they will not listen to you until they feel like you've listened to them. So they give you an objection. Instead of just saying, well, great, but what if this is not? No, 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 no. I completely understand. Did, did, did. I'm going to repeat and approve. I'm going to make him feel like I heard him. I understand them. I validate what they said. Does it, repeat and approve doesn't mean I have to agree with what they said. I validate it. Like I understand where, how you're thinking, where you're coming from. If I have to ask questions. So the purpose here is to make them feel heard and understood because that I think probably one of the um, most important human needs is validation is just feel like, you know, I heard you. Yes. What you said matters. I get it. I understand it. Like every human being wants that. Nobody likes to have a conversation with someone that you feel like they're not listening. And, and by the way, this is how human beings communicate all the time. Check it out. I know, I know you know this. Like, do you enjoy having conversations with someone that when you are talking, you can tell they're not listening and they even look like they're just waiting for you to stop talking so they could start telling you what they think? Who likes that? Nobody. So remember, if you're not, if you're, calling expireds and fizzbos, you're getting objections, you're not setting enough appointments. Points number one and two here are the most important ones. You're not gonna be able to do point number two, the repeat and approve effectively if you're not listening intently because you don't know what they said. Like you weren't really listening. You're just like, oh, okay, well, I, uh, and then you go on. So what are they gonna do? They're likely to repeat what they said before. No, 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 I don't wanna pay a commission. No, I am going to list with the same age and or I have a friend. Who, I know you know that you hear the same object on the same call. You hear the, the same objection two or three times. Why? They, they keep repeating it to, to say to you, hey, you didn't hear me, so I'm going to say it again. And then at some point, they just get tired of this and they say, oh, I'm busy. You know, I'm not doing anything. I'll click. And that's it. The call is over. So point number two, in my opinion, is the most important, but you can't do two without doing one. So here's point number three, and then we're going to open it up for questions, okay? Before we take our five-minute break at 2 p.m. Point number three is ask a question to get their attention, spark their curiosity, and create doubt. My favorite structure for these questions uh, is the structure of the question. Then I'll give you a couple of examples. If blank, would you blank? If blank, would you blank? So write that down. And hmm, with a for sale by owner, um, one that I use often, you know, the, the, I don't want to pay a commission. I can sell it myself after I repeat and approve, you know, the whole repeating and approving. Mr. Seller, if I can show you a way where you would be able to actually net more money from the sale of your home by working with me instead of selling it yourself, is that something that you would consider? If blank, would you blank? Here's another one. This is very versatile. Versatile, like you could use for friend in real estate, neighborhood specialist, whatever. If, I love this one. If, if there was a better way to get your home sold, wouldn't you at least want to know about it? If blank, would you blank? Okay, spark curiosity, create doubt. And they're like, well, what do you mean? How could, what, what are you talking about? Like, sometimes they would ju they just say, well, yeah, great. Well, it'd be a good time for me to stop by for just 20 minutes and show you exactly how I can do that for you. 
I'm available today at three o'clock. Would four be better? That's step number four. It's the close. So they may just say yes. And then you have to close. You don't start just talking and like lose control of this conversation. You gotta always, the last step is to close. Now, what if they say, well, what do you mean let me more money? I don't think that's possible. I'm already asking, you know, a very high price for the home. I come, what, what is this now? It's an objection. What do you do when you hear an objection? Back to step one, I listen intently. I repeat and approve. I completely understand. I, I, so I, what I hear you saying is you did some study in, in regards to the price and you feel like this is the highest price you can sell it for and you can't see how working with me could possibly end up netting you more money. I, I, I understand the math is just not adding up for you right now. And that's exactly why I'd like to meet with you for just 20 minutes so I can show you how and why working with me would be a financial benefit for you. In essence, my commission would not be an expense. It would be an investment for you. It would only take 20 minutes for me to show you how I can do that. Would you be available at three o'clock today? Would four be better? No, but, you know, no, I just started, you know, I'm getting a lot of activity and I'm expecting an offer. So give me a call in a month. If I don't sell it, maybe I'd consider, oh, what is that? Another objection. So what do I do? Listen intently, repeat and approve. Ask, and I, it's a conversation that you're having, but that's, that's the structure, that those are the steps in this conversation. It's possible that you ask for the appointment the first time and they say yes. Just yesterday, the latest Fishbowl call, these are actual for sale by owners right here in Miami where I live. One was uploaded on the YouTube channel yesterday. I think he said, yeah, like it was a four minute phone call. First he said no. And then I did exactly what I'm telling you here. And he said, yeah, I'm like, okay. It was a million dollar listing. Same the first call, brand new FISBO on the market. He gave me the appointment. So doing exactly what I'm teaching you here, okay? So it could happen. After you ask the first time, the second time, the third time, 80% of the yeses will come after five closes. And I think that's where a lot of agents are falling short. You just don't know how to keep this going for oh, until I say, play the hang up game. What does that mean? You're not allowed to hang up unless they hang up on you. So you got to keep this going. You got to keep this conversation moving and closing for the appointment after every objection you handle until you get a yes. Because that's what it takes. Sometimes it's faster, but most of the time it's going to take you going through that process several times. So let's do a question break, Jenny. All right, guys. So if you could utilize your digital hands down in the bottom of Zoom, that's where you go to reactions and you can say raise hand, then we will monitor that and go through the questions. Um, one thing I do want to mention, Jackie, there's a question from Angelica and sales X training can one be trained for FISBOs and expired. So I think I know the answer to that, but can you confirm? <laughs> so the question is, will We'll, we'll be trained on FISBOs and expires. Oh, like yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I can't help myself. Right. But let me, let me say this. It's not only about FISBOs and expires. Okay. It really is the training. You, you will know exactly what to do with FISBOs and expires from the call to the entire presentation. And there's no question about that. But really, the training is for you to be the best listing agent in your marketplace. And that's gonna require you to master FISBOs and expires because when you do, everything else is easy in comparison because they're the toughest ones. So mastering that side of, of your real estate business on the listing side, you'll be in control of your income, of your time. It's, it's amazing. So, Great. yes. 
and Angelica, your hand was up. Did you have anything to add to that before we go to the other questions? You're good, great. Okay, so some other questions in the chat box. So Tracy asks, okay, so you let them know you can net them more money and you set the appointment. She's saying, then what? Yeah, then what, exactly. Um, okay, so I'm gonna answer this briefly because the, the look, I'm, I'm not, I, Jackie Alice asked me to do this class because I really hadn't done, I used to do classes for SCF years ago and then I stopped because I'm really busy with my business. She asked me to do it, I said yes. So I'm not trying to sell you into sales X training. I, actually on my YouTube channel, there are some videos about this on the physical presentation. There's a webinar that I did and it's there and you can watch it called the physical formula. I did some live role plays because there was someone there I was role playing with and there's a lot, there's a lot of information for free on my YouTube channel. Go there, watch the videos, subscribe, click the bell or upload videos every week, like three, four new videos every week there. But how you net more money is, I mean, I have like probably mm, 20 or 30 lessons in sales X training where I, I, I break it down step by step, step by step, but you'll be able to find a lot of information on my YouTube channel. So go there. There's to uh, Jackie's point. There's, there are a lot of ways to, to sell that value. Yeah. Um, and for them and to explain to them if they spend a certain number of days on market, there's time cost in that there uh, are lots and lots of facts honestly, about how working with an agent does net you more money. So you're bringing evidence to them. And that's, I'm sure what a lot of that goes through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, someone says, talk about your cold calling results now compared to five or 10 years ago, because they hear that cold calling is dead. Wow. Cold calling is dead. Really? Wow. Every time I pick up the phone, it takes me about even me today. Okay. It's a lot easier today than it was five, 10 years ago for me, because even though I haven't, I, I've been coaching and training for 15 years, I haven't sold real estate or, or prospected cold call in 15 years. I just actually, I'm like, I think two or three years ago, uh, my son was actively selling and I, I was a bold coach at the time and I had two weeks off and I'm like, okay, I'm going to prospect with you. We took like three or four listings in one week from the calls that I made, Fizbo's and Expires. And then more recently for the YouTube channel, I pick up the phone and I, I've been calling Fizbo's because there's just so many of them right now because the market is so hot. Everybody thinks they can sell on their own. So I've just been calling Fizbo's. It is the market of the moment. And so typically an hour, hour and a half on the phone, qualified listing appointment, set, done. So... Um, it's that if you don't make the calls and you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what to say, you don't know how to handle objections. Well, then, yeah. I mean, I don't think I, again, for me, it's a lot easier today because I'm just more skilled. I'm better every day. I get better, even though I'm not actively selling real estate. And if every single one of you have that same commitment to getting better at what you do every day. You're gonna get results cold calling. Mm -hmm. But if you don't believe you can, then somebody else will take those listings because there are plenty of people calling. That's right. Um, okay, so someone asks, or asks, they understand where they can get information for, um, or the owner's information for expired through like an MLS system. Where are you getting the FISBO information to call? Um, through sales X training, I have an affiliation with a company called Espresso agent. Mm -hmm. It's the highest quality phone numbers for Fizbo's expired and neighborhoods. Cause it with, mm -hmm. if you go on sales .com, on the header, there's a tab for data. Just click there and check it out. Um, I have a code that they, you would actually get free neighborhood search included in the price, which is already super affordable. So that, that when I'm calling Fizbo's, that's what I use. I'm using Espresso Agent. Yeah, there, you know, you guys can call through, you can look for the numbers on Zillow and this and that. But most people I would say who do this at a high level are, are paying for a service. So yeah. 
um, on some level to get that information. Struck. Yeah, it's just too time consuming to be looking it up on your own. Correct. You have to you have to keep in mind do not call lists and all right. that, which is and very yeah. important. They and note those as well. So they yeah. tell you who's on the do not call. You That's have right. all that information. Yeah. So normally it's something that you would um you would pay for as part of you know cost of doing business. Yep. All right. And then uh, last question before we go to break, unless we have some hand rates, talking about uh, the access to lessons, downloadable scripts, presentations, what all do you get on day one of buying sales X or is it a, is it a longer training process? Where things all of out? Currently you sign up today, you have a library of 250 lessons, video lessons, live calls, listing. It's already there. Got it. And then Today, there's a, there was a new one. Tomorrow, there's going to be another new one. And the next day, Monday through Friday, there's a new one. Two live calls per week that you get to participate on and also get the recordings of. So, yeah, you sign up and immediately you have access to the entire platform. It's a great. lot. A lot of great stuff. All right, anybody, um, I just... Uh, input the sales X training information in the chat box. What other questions do we have as we go into break? All right. So Grace, when you say qualified listing appointment, is that a prospect that you qualified um, and said, yes, they will list if that makes sense. Or if they say no, is that a qualified appointment? Basically, how are you determining the difference between a qualified appointment versus Okay. Is that question from Grace? Yes. Grace, you're a client. I know, Daggy, but I <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you, you, you can go on the platform right now. There are lessons about that, but I'll answer it for you. <laughs> She's trying to sneak one in there. She thought I wasn't going to say her name. Maybe. I'm going to say, but I see, I, I see the name. I love your program. Oh, I've yeah. been obsessed with you. This is not even sponsored. Like if you have the opportunity to join, do it, be involved, uh -huh. get in there and just go. Okay. So Daggy. <laughs> okay. So ask me like, what is, what is the question in your mind? I'll answer it. So, okay, so I set the appointment, I qualify, and then I say, you know, by the way, what I say to you makes sense, and, you know, um, we can we can put something together, da, da, da. well, uh, would you be ready to list with me today? And, well, you know, let's just go ahead and see what happens. Okay, great, I'll see you Friday at three. Okay, got it. So here's what's cool, cool about this, Grace. The next point on the agenda of what I'm going to talk about is the importance of pre-qualifying all of your appointments. So you're right on cue. Like it, that's the next thing that I'm going to talk about. So how about we take a five minute break and when we come back, we'll Wait. get right into that. Cause Perfect. I'm going to talk about that for a little bit and I'll answer that for you. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I'm going to start sharing my screen for our break and we'll see you all in five minutes. See you soon. So we're going to talk about the importance of pre-qualifying. Is Grace able to um, unmute herself? If you can, Grace, because then I'm going to talk about it a little bit, but then I want to role play with you, like what you said, you know, and they say, well, we'll see. I don't know. Whatever they say, um, we can role play. So hopefully she can back. unmute herself. It doesn't have to be right now. So why... Do you have to pre-qualify all of your appointments? Here's how I look at it. This is not optional. It's not like, well, you know what, but I don't like that this question or I don't like that question or I'm not gonna ask that. I used to do that when I was my first couple of years in real estate to ask them the way that I word the question that Grace brought up is, in my sales act scripts, which is what I used when I was selling real estate. Um, so Jenny, when I see you this afternoon at five o'clock after our meeting, if you feel confident that hiring me is the best decision you can make, would you be ready to go ahead and get started? Something like that. Mm -hmm. So I remember that question. I'm like, Oh, I'm not asking. I'm not going to ask that. I don't want them to think that I, I'm going that with the intention of listing the home. I actually used to think like that. To me, that sounds so insane right now. Now, if some of you think like that right now, it's okay. I used to think like that too. Let's be real about this though. You don't want them to know that you're going there 
to talk about listing their home and you would like to take the listing, you want them to think that you're going there just to, just to talk, just to see the house, or just to see if you may have a buyer. That makes zero sense, okay? It's a mindset again. So every question on the pre-qualifying script is critically important. You pre-qualify an appointment to de there are a few things that you're determining the purpose of pre-qualifying. Their motivation to sell, which is where are they moving to? When would they like to move? And why are they moving? So you want to know. Now, what I say to my clients is this, and this is so important. You don't pre-qualify an appointment until you set one. What does that mean? A lot of agents, they would call, let's say, I'm, I'm going to use Fizbo's again. They call Fizbo and the Fizbo says, yeah, no, it's okay. I'm not, in, I'm not really in a hurry and... And if I don't sell it, it's if I sell it, great. But, you know, I'm not going to list the home. If it doesn't sell, it's okay. I'll stay here. What does that sound like? It sounds like a lack of motivation, doesn't it? Yeah. So here's the danger of, I said, you, you, you pre-qualify appointments. You don't disqualify prospects. So now when they say, I'm not in a hurry, I don't care if I don't sell it, I'll stay, da, da, da. Sounds like a lack of motivation. And a lot of agents, they, they use that to disqualify the prospect. So you're, you buy, it's what I said earlier, you buy into the objection because you're expecting that it's going to be hard and they're not going to give you an appointment right now and you're going to have to follow up. So what they said confirms what you were thinking. And now you're like, okay, well, you know, why are you cooperating with agents? So if I have a buyer, I, I mentioned this earlier, okay, if you were here. So now you disqualified that prospect and you don't want to do that at all. You don't, I don't care what their motivation is or lack of motivation. It's totally irrelevant to me until I set an appointment. I'm going to learn about their motivation when I am pre-qualifying the appointment. But for me to pre-qualify an appointment, I have to set the appointment first. I don't know if you all, like, if you have questions about this, write it down because I'm going to change the, the, the topic here for a little bit. But then, you know, in, in half an hour or 35 minutes, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions. This is critical. This is getting in the way of you setting appointments probably more than anything else. Okay? You, you actually disqualifying them for whatever reason. So you're pre-qualified to learn about their motivation Financial situation, meaning um, how much they want to list it for, how much they owe, do they have a second mortgage, the financial aspect of it. Here's another one that you disqualify prospects. No, no, I'm already, um, oh, this is great. Fizbos or expireds can do this. They would say, um, well, you know, if you could get me a million dollars for a house and it's worth 600 and you know it. But then I'll, then yeah, I mean, I'll pay you. Yeah, you can sell it, bring me a buyer, I'll pay you a commission. And you're like, you're, you, I have, there's a YouTube call of a Fisbo that it was, it was like that. He kept telling me, well, if you could get me this price, then sure. And you'll see how I handle it. I'm not, I'm not going down that rabbit hole. If I go in, if I, I don't have an appointment yet. So what he's telling me about the price and what he wants, it's like, what difference does it make? I don't have an appointment with this person. What, what am I worried? The only goal that I have is to set an appointment. I'm going to pre-qualify it after I get it. So I'm not going to, starting a conversation about price with a seller over the phone before you even set an appointment is a rabbit hole. You can get out of it. You're not getting out of that one, okay? 
you're, you're, you're not going to be able to recoup and be able to set an appointment. Very hard to do. So don't just don't go there. So pre-qualifying, motivation, financial situation. Are there any of the owners other than the person you're speaking with and will they be there for the appointment? And at the end of the meeting, if they believe that hiring you is the best decision they can make, would they be ready to go ahead and do it? To me, that, that's it. There, there are some other questions in between. Depending on how they answer some of the questions, you have to keep asking clarifying questions. You got to dig. So, Grace, can you unmute your line? So we can role play? Grace. She's working on it. I see her trying She's to working find on it. it. Okay. I'm she was unmuted here. earlier. All right. Okay. Oh, there you go. Great. So I want to role play with you the the question that you said, well, if what I say makes sense and you feel confident that work hiring me is the best decision you can make, will you be ready to do it? And they say, go ahead. Oh, uh, you know, Jackie, uh, you know, we're going to just, you know, come on by, take a look. Uh, okay. We'll see what you have to say. And, and sure. I mean, we're just not really to make a decision, but I mean, just right. come on by anyway. I yeah. completely understand, Grace. So, so what I hear you saying, I mean, obviously, you, you don't know me, you don't know who I am, you don't know what I do, you have no idea what is it that I can do to actually benefit you. So I understand why over the phone, like, you, you're not going to give me a commitment that you, you would list the property. And, and I, I understand, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect you to do that. I'm asking you hypothetically, though, Grace, if at the end of our meeting, you, not me, you actually are as confident as I am that hiring me is the best financial decision you can make, would you consider it? Um, you know what, Jackie? Yeah, I'll consider it. But here's what we'll do. Um, okay. You know, put me down for 3 p.m. tomorrow and then call me and let me know um, when you're on your way. And I'll let you know if, if I'm there or not. And, um, and we'll just go from there, you know, because um, my okay. schedule is so all over. Hang on. Me. Time out for a minute, Grace. Mm -hmm. you, you now, you, you just totally got away from that actual question. So I'm assuming we have, now you're saying, well, you know, I don't really know if I want to meet. I don't know if I'm going to be available. It's a different conversation. We okay. could do that, but I wanted to stay with, answer okay. the question you asked. Okay, okay. got it. Uh, hypothetically, I mean, if, if what you say makes sense, uh, you know, perhaps I can consider it. And um, I, obviously, I mean, I would have to discuss it with my wife and we like to take our time. I want to see all our facts first. before. Right. Absolutely. Them. Absolutely. And, and, and Grace, by the way, I, I hear what you're saying. I respect what you're saying because the sale of your home is a, it's a very important decision and there's a lot of money at stake. So you want to make sure that you're hiring the best agent and you're making the best decision possible. And it's not a decision that you're going to make by yourself. Obviously, you need to speak with your spouse. And, and by the way, would, will your spouse be present during our meeting? Um, I can tell her, yeah. I mean, right around the time okay. we'll meet, uh, she'll be there. Okay, great. And, and Grace, that would be really, really important that she be present as well, because again, it's an important decision. She might have some questions for me. So if the three of us meet together, we'll be able to answer all the questions that you have and make sure that you both feel comfortable with uh, going ahead and working with me, okay? Okay, sounds so good. Grace, one, yeah, one well. more question. So in this process of, of considering different real estate agents, because I know you mentioned to me that you, you've been getting a lot of phone calls from agents, you probably already met with a few. What specifically are you looking for, Grace, in the agent that you'll hire? You know, just get me top dollar. I mean, what? Mm -hmm. and, and of course, you know, to see what the commission will be. I wanted you to go ahead and. Uh, right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Great. So, yeah, I, I made a note of that. Obviously, 
We're going to discuss the commission. And I, it sounds to me like the most important thing for you is to make sure that you sell this home for the absolute highest price that this market will give us, correct? Yes, yes, that's correct. And, and so again, if at the end of our meeting, you feel confident with the way that I work and you believe that I have the tools and strategies, the, the negotiating experience, to get you top market price. It sounds like we would go ahead and get started then, right? I guess you could say that, yeah. That okay. sounds, that Excellent. sounds right. I look forward to seeing you today at five o'clock. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Okay. So I wanted to stay with that because that was your original question. What did you get out of the role play, Grace? The fact that you stuck to the qualifying and um, I realize that maybe I give people the opportunity to go back and second guess, you know, kind of go back into circle because I literally mimicked exactly the call that I had today. So, you know, with a husband, with a wife and so forth and so on. So you just stuck to the, um, you know, your tonality decrease. It wasn't an increase, an upswing. It was a downswing. And then, of course, the, the fact that you stayed on course with what your intention is about the meeting, I think was the most important. Right. Okay. So what I did to, by the way, Grace, in the SalesX platform, there's so many lessons on pre-qualifying. There are role plays just like this. You can listen to it over and over and over. So go there. Okay, girl. girl. Yes, yes. Awesome okay. platform. Talk so, to you. Thank you. <laughs> so what I did with her, though, is what I was saying earlier. Like I, I asked clarifying, I did a massive approval. No matter every time she said something, like I completely understand, you know, I it was just handling an objection here and, and circling back, asking clarifying questions and asking it again. And that's what you have to do. So when they say, when they're vague and say, well, I don't know, you know, we'll see when we get here. I don't know what you do. You cannot just say, oh, okay. No, you, you have, for you to be in a position of being in control of this appointment, you need to keep, you need to learn how to ask questions, listen, and keep circling around until you know exactly what you need to do to take this listing. The question that I, the last one that I asked Grace, which was um, in this process of inter or speaking with agents, what specifically are you looking for in the agent that you hire? That is, oh my gosh, it's hard to pick a favor, but that's like at the top of the list, okay? It's one of my favorite pre-qualifying questions because think about it. They will tell you exactly what you, what you need to show and what you need to do to list this home. They'll tell you. And then you, you take whatever their answer is and you insert it into, so at the end of our meeting, which is what I did with Grace, if at the end of our meeting, you feel confident that I am the best age and negotiating the debt to sell your home for the most money, will you be ready to start? So I think so. I mean, I'm, I'm putting her words back, you know, like I'm regurgitating it to her. So now I go on that appointment and they don't want to list with me. I mean, I'm responsible for that. And they told me what I needed to show them. So if they don't list is because I fell short of that, but I am in control. I know exactly what I need to do to walk away with this listing. Does that make sense to everyone? I trust it does. So if you have questions on that, we'll talk about that later when, you, when we open it up. The next thing I wanna to talk to you is about sounding pushy or coming across as pushy because Obviously, that's not like anybody's goal to be pushy. And I know when I say you have to close for the appointment five times, oh, some of you are like, oh my gosh, no. Like, you know, it's I, I, like you're nervous about it. You're scared. And part of that is sounding pushy, you know, just being pushy. So I want to give you, I, I, I made this up actually when I was selling real estate, like what's the difference between pushy and aggressive? And it's a huge difference. And, and when you really um, get this, that can make a huge difference in the results that you're going to get. 
first of all, motivated sellers. A motivated seller is someone who has to sell their home or they really want to sell. Motivation is not only having to sell. It could be wanting to, okay? So either have to or want to. Motivated sellers are looking for an aggressive agent. Yes, they are. Someone who wants to sell their home is not looking for a, well, you know, so what do you think? And should we do it like this? Do you like it like that? And no, they're looking for like a leader, a leader, aggressive in that. So here's the difference between pushy and aggressive. Pushy is very ego centered. Focus on me, 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 me. And it usually is kind of desperate and repelling. You know, like when you're desperate for a listing, for a commission check, you got to pay your bills. You're like, you're, you're just desperate. So it's not about them at all. You know, the coming from contribution. No, it's not about contribution. It's about me because I need, I need business right now. So I come across very repelling to people. Aggressive is believing that you are the best agent in your marketplace for any seller to list their home with. And if they don't list with you, they're making a mistake. And I, I am aggressive because I'm not going to allow them to make the mistake of not working with me. Because if, if, if I let this call go, or I let this listing go on the appointment, they're going to list with somebody else. And that will be a huge mistake because no one else can do a job like me. I am the best agent in this market. So it's not about me. It's about them. Do you get the difference? And that is what they're looking for, a motivated seller. They're looking for an aggressive agent. Someone who is knowledgeable, who is a leader, who's experienced, who speaks confidently, who leads them. Take them by the hand and say, I know exactly how to get this done. Let's go. We'll make it. I'm going to make it happen for you. And you make them feel that way. And they're like, yeah. In every aspect of life, people are looking for leaders, political leaders, religious leaders. Like they're look like, guide me. Tell me, what do I do? no different with a homeowner that's what they are looking for so here give them what they want you got to show up like that on these listing appointments we're going to talk about how to do to, to deliver a powerful listing presentation that's who you need to show up as you cannot show up like oh hi oh Oh, I love, oh, you have a dog. How cute. I have a dog too. Oh, you like this. You like that. They're, show up as a professional who they respect for your experience. You're knowledgeable. And, and, and maybe some of you are sitting thinking, well, but I'm new to real estate. You know, I don't have a lot of experience. I don't really know. Like fake it till you make it. Can you act confidently can you speak can you practice can you role play can you prepare yourself so you can show up at the top of your game you will have a very high closing ratio on your listing appointments but if you show up weak desperate i mean just think about it put put yourself in the situation you let's say you are a motivated seller you have to, or you want to sell your home, and what would you be looking for? And and you're interviewing different agents. Like, who, who's gonna stand out? Because to deliver a powerful listing presentation, let's talk about that for a moment. Your listing presentation is not an isolated event. What does that mean? You don't just plop into somebody's home out of context. And that's it, you do a presentation. No, what precedes that? The phone call where you actually set the appointment, pre-qualifying the appointment is setting the tone 
So by the time you set an appointment, you pre-qualify this appointment, the seller should be sitting on the edge of their seat like, whoa, this agent, this is not like anybody else that I've talked to, stand out. That's what I mean by stand out. They're just, their mind is blown. They're, they're talking to all these agents, you know, like the average agent out there, have no idea what they're doing, don't have, and, and then you show up like, whoa, you you're, you're, you're know what you're doing, you're in control, you got the knowledge, the experience, and they're like, wow, okay, I got to hear what this agent has to say. And now, so the actual listing presentation is, it's a continuation of this. That's what I mean. Like, it's not an isolated event. It, 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 the call and the pre-call is leading to it. And now you show up the exact same way. You know that first impressions are critical. So you show up, your car is clean, doesn't have to be new, it needs to be clean inside and out. You get out of your car, you got a smile on your face, shoulders back, you're, you're dressed professionally, even if you just have one suit that you wear to your listing appointments. You know, if you're a lady, put some makeup on, you know, dress professionally, your hair is well taken care of, men, women, like you show up as a true professional. You knock on the door, they open, you have, well, we don't shake hands these days much, but if you, when we do that again, you know, firm handshake, just a little bit firmer than, than theirs. And you just got to be in control. It's showtime. That's what it is. You're here to wow them. And that's, that's what it takes. Now, Closing for the signature on the listing appointment. How do I ask for the signature? How do I not make this awkward? How, is, how does this just flow? So what I used to do, and this is what I recommend my clients to do is, first of all, you are, when you show up to this appointment, you're prepared. So all the paperwork, meaning uh, the listing agreement, any disclosures that need to be signed, everything is filled out ahead of time. I wouldn't use electronic signature. If you have an iPad, they, I would not. I prefer to have paper in front of me, okay? A couple of years ago, I mentioned earlier that I, I, did, I made some prospecting calls, set appointments. I went on listing appointments with my son, paper, paper and pen. Same exact thing that I used to do. It's what I would do. So when you, when you get to this appointment, your listing agreement is completely filled out. Their name, the address, the commission, the expiration date, anything that needs to be filled out except for the price. You leave the price blank. And when you, you, you get to the house, they show you around or you go look around. I, I used to like having them show me around. Not like, oh, you sit here, I'll go look. No. For me, if it's somebody you know, if it's a past client, fear of influence, you could say, yeah, let me just take a quick peek. But with people that you don't know, which was every appointment that I went on were expireds and FISBOs, for me, it was an opportunity to ask questions, to just build some rapport with them. And it doesn't take a long time at all. You know, it takes, takes a couple of minutes. Then we settle at the kitchen counter. I always stood up not my first second year but once I started getting like okay I know what I'm supposed to be doing position of authority when you stand up they sit down you stand that's how I always did my presentations and then so you're settled here on the kitchen counter you open your briefcase you take out the listing agreement you don't say anything, you know, you're just taking your papers out. You take the listing agreement, you put it on the tape on the counter, right in front of them, like between you and them, and you put a pen on top of it and you just leave it there. And then you start whatever your presentation. So that listing agreement sitting there with the pen on top of it is a subliminal close. They know what's up. Okay. It's like you, you could put it like facing sideways like that. They know what it is. It's a listing agreement and the pen is right there because you're going to sign this very shortly. So you don't say anything. You just leave it there from the very beginning. 
And now you start your presentation. And the last thing that's going to happen on the presentation is you're going to talk about the price. So let's just assume they may have some pricing objections. They want to overprice the property. And okay, let's assume you agree on a price. So now, hold on, I'm going to get a pen. So now, so I have the listing agreement and I got the pen right here, right? So it, it would go, go like, I don't even have a book or anything. So I'm just going to pretend, okay? So, okay, Jenny, great. So we're going to go ahead and list the property for three ninety nine, just like this, okay? I'm repeating it to them. Great. So we're going to go ahead and list it for three ninety nine. I write it down in the blank space. And so I just need your signature right here. That's it. That's how you close for the appointment for the signature. So I just, so uh, I'm going to repeat. Okay. And you should practice this in front of a mirror. So you don't feel so awkward. Oh, that's, so, oh, I don't know if I could do that. Just practice in front of a mirror to yourself. So great. Then Jenny, we are going to price it at $3.99 and just need your signature right here. And I'm handing, you can't see me. So you just hand them the pen. Where's my camera? Up here. I don't know. Okay. Like point to the signature line and ask them to sign. And so I just need your signature right here. Don't say anything. I remember going on listing appointments sometimes. I go like that and there's like, a husband and wife or like two people and they're like they're they're I'm just pointing you know the papers on the on the counter and I'm I turn it around and I'm pointing to the the signature line and they're just they they look at each other like you know, and one of them grabs the pen and signs and that's it the other one signs it too okay so how do you handle objections that come up right now? What if they don't sign right now when you ask and they say, well, uh, you know, what's your commission? What is that? It's a no objection. Yeah. So over the phone, you have four steps to handle objections. In person, you have five. So step one is the same, listen intently. Step two is the same, repeat and approve. Step three, okay, look, I'm gonna give you steps and you need steps and you need scripts. And eventually you're gonna, you're gonna do this so much that you're, you're gonna just know what to do. But step three, you can ask a question to get their attention. If it is appropriate, for some objections it is, for some objections it isn't. So you gotta use common sense. I, I say to my clients, you gotta listen and use common sense. That comes with time on task. You know, how do I teach someone like I could give you the script, I could give you the steps, but in the moment, your intuition, like what, like how do, what do I do here? Do I, do I say, well, if um, actually when you're handling objections over the phone, I gave you the if blanks, would you blanks? Some of those are appropriate for in person too. But let's say they, if they ask, you know, can you cut your commission? My response to that, first of all, let me talk a little bit about this. Commission. There's, there's one of two reasons why they, they ask you if you would cut your commission, okay? One is just because they got to ask. That's it. Not because, you know, like they don't think you're worth the commission you charge. The other one is value. They don't see the value. They're, and, and here's what I mean. 
let's say they talk to another agent that said they could list it for, you know, 2% less than your commission. If they believe that that agent and you are equal in value to them, in, in the results and the value to them, if you're equal, I'm trying to make a scale, naturally they're going to want to pay a lower commission. I would too. If I'm buying a car and I go to two different dealerships and the exact same car over here is two or 3,000 less, why would I pay more if it's the exact same thing? We're a value conscious society. So for them, so if they're questioning your commission in comparison to somebody, what somebody else is charging, it's either because they just have to ask. I remember going on listing appointments where, well, you know, another agent said they would do it for less. I mean, are you able to cut your commission? I say, no, my commission is 6%. And they say, oh, okay. I just thought I'd ask. Like literally, that's all they say. So you, you have to, you have to own it, you know, like own your value. But if they don't see the value, if, if they're thinking, well, you're the same as the other person who charges less, then of course I'm going to charge less. So then you got to look at how you're showing up and what you're, what you're offering in terms of value because people pay for value. I believe now there are some people who are I don't know how to say this and not sound. There are some people that are just kind of cheap. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't like they're just going to hire. Like there's an objection handler for commission that you say, if you're involved in a lawsuit for, and then you fill in the price of their home, let's say it's 400,000. If you're involved in a lawsuit for $400,000 and you needed to hire an attorney to represent you in court, would how much that attorney charge be your criteria for choosing the attorney or would you want to hire the best attorney in town to represent you? For a small percentage of people, it would be the cheapest in town. So then I would, you know, I'm giving you things to think about. Okay. Another objection handler for commission would just be Grace, if you're looking for the best, for the cheapest agent in town, that's not who I am. There are agents, there are many agents in our area that work for free. That's not who I am. If you're looking for the best agent to market this home for you aggressively and sell your home for top market price and negotiate the best terms for you all the way through the walkthrough, that's who I am. So, but they got to see the value because if they don't see the value, then naturally they're not going to want to pay. So when you ask for the signature, one of two things will happen. Either they'll pick up that, they pick up that pen and sign, or they'll give you an objection. If they give you an objection, you're going to listen intently, repeat and approve, ask a question to get their attention, handle the objection. That's the extra step and close for the signature again. They'll either sign or give you another objection. Listen intently, repeat and approve, ask a question. Um, for example, I was going to give you this earlier and I forgot. So a question to get their attention is, so let's say it's still a commission, it's a commission objection. And they say, well, another agent said they could do it for less. And, and Mr. Seller, I completely understand. And, and, and I do understand why that would be, would be attractive for you because you're looking at it thinking, well, it, I mean, the less commission I pay, the more money I keep. And Mr. Seller, can I tell you why? Here's the question to get their attention. Can I tell you why working with a discount agent will actually end up costing you money? And they're like, that gets their attention. Well, well what do you mean? Now you got to handle the objection and then ask for the signature again.
Does that make sense? Two forty, Jenny. Let's open it up for questions. I trust you got a lot of questions. Okay, so right, let's go. Let's go. Raise your hand or put it in the chat box, please. Questions. I have a question while everyone's waiting. So okay. I've I've been selling real estate for um, about ten years now, and I will say that. Um, sometimes the hardest thing is making that first phone call and picking up the phone. Oops. Did you just disappear? My friend, Jackie, where'd you go? I see you're on. I just don't see your face anymore. So sometimes it's picking up the phone and making that first, that first call. How do you get your mindset in a place to do that, uh, with as much confidence as you have? Well, I wasn't always as confident. Okay. So like you build it up over time, right? Like, I, what I say to my clients is this, mindset is everything. So you really have to protect your, your, your mental space. And so from the moment you wake up in the morning until noon, you should only be involved in three activities. And that is working on your mindset read great books, listen to audio tapes, watch sales X lessons, find great stuff on YouTube, do affirmations, review your goals, visualizations, mindset. The second activity is work on your skills, practice, chant scripts out loud, do role plays, listen to great role plays. So you're practicing, practicing, and then prospect, lead generation. Between, like when you open your eyes in the morning, if what you do is you go check social media and then, you know, something terrible happened, you know, you start reading bad news and then you just, you, you, you go down a hole, like a mental, like mindset, you're, you're, it just throws you completely out of whack. Mm -hmm. I know it happens to everyone. Mm -hmm. So for you to actually be ready and inspired and motivated to pick up a phone, you what happens before like you're you're spending a couple of hours you're watching the news whatever you're doing I mean when I was selling real estate I had two little kids when I got a real estate license I was a stay-at-home mom my daughter was six months old my son was eight but then I started selling real estate you know here they're growing and I and I started my third year working full-time but I still you know I had two little kids in the morning I wanted to get my daughter ready for school I wanted to get my son ready for school so but I, I didn't go and, and start reading the news or watching the news or listening to negative people, getting involved with negative conversations, because all that affects your ability to take action. Mm -hmm. What we talk about when you think about lead generation and do it, doing it consistently, because real estate, um, my son. And he's my partner in sales X training. He's just an incredible, my gosh. Like I, I say to him every day and I mean it like, I couldn't do this without you. And he's like, mom, you're the trainer. Yeah, I know. But if you aren't there behind the scenes, because he does everything. And he said to me the other day, he said, I realize now, because he has a real estate license. He, 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 he's my partner now. So he's not selling real estate. But when he has family members, somebody that wants to sell and they buy and sell like multi-million dollar properties, you know, he'll get involved. But he's like, I realize now that a real estate license allows you, it's almost like you could print money when you master this, you know, now that he's so involved in sales X training. And I mean, he grew up watching me sell real estate. I was, a, I was before sales X, I was a coach for 15 years. He would always, you know, I'm working from a home office, making coaching calls. He, he knows what I do. I mean, there's no doubt about that, but he's so in it now that he's like, my mind is blown. I realized that agents that really focus on mastering the stuff you're talking about, like print money, where do you go get a career like that? Mm -hmm. But it's not easy. It's not easy to pick up the phone and make that first call. You've got to work on it. You've got to protect your mental space. You've got to work on your skills. 
every single day because if you expect to make hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars that you're selling real estate, which you can, it's not going to be like easy. You're going to have to work hard for it. Great but point. It's, it's, high risk, high reward career and you have to put 100%. in the work. I love that. Um, okay. So a few of the questions that came up and I'll go through them and you can answer them. Um, Someone asked, how does a discount agent cost them money? Okay, so like a, a brief answer to that is when a seller hires an agent, they are hiring someone who's going to represent them in the marketing and negotiating and closing of this transaction. They're that the, the agent they hire is going to negotiate on their behalf and they're not going to be present in those negotiations that's going to happen between the their the agent they hire and the buyer's agent or a buyer directly okay and does it make sense that an agent who's not able to defend their own commission, they don't even see the value in, in themselves and what they do, will be the toughest and best negotiator for anyone. The answer is no, no. Great agents don't, great agents that believe in the value of, of what they do, they know they're the best in the area. They know how to negotiate. They know how to mark. They believe they don't cut their commission. So yeah, that, I mean, that's how, that's the short answer to that. Mm -hmm. um, all right, Nordis, do you want me to, you want to come off mute? Sure. Okay, great. Ask. Share with your question, please. So a very typical objection. Hi, Jackie. Hi. Thank you for the information and the content. It's great. Um, uh, one of the main objections I'm getting as we're presenting to sellers is that there is no inventory. So they're afraid that they will not have a place to go to. So I know that there's a negotiation of we, we can do post occupancy, we can negotiate um, things during the contract, but that is really become a challenging, a challenging objection when telling someone, you know, I can assure you won't be homeless. But a lot of sellers are saying well, they don't so want to. Nordis, I get it. And it is a common objection. When I was selling real estate in the early 2000s, because it was a very hot market, I used to hear that all the time too. So let's talk about the mindset. Your, your mindset as an agent when you hear this objection. So when you said, well, it's tough to say, you know, I can assure you're not going to be homeless. You have to. And you have to believe it. Because if you buy into the fact that they may not find a home, to buy and they could end up being homeless, you're not gonna take you're not gonna take this listing. You're not how do you convince somebody of something that you don't believe in? I'm not saying you don't believe that you you you'll figure it out. You're gonna figure it out for them. I never had a homeless client, you're not gonna be the first one. And here are our options: post occupancy, you could rent. You, you could rent a home temporarily. I will we'll find out exactly what you're looking for. I will prospect in, the, in those areas and I'll talk to 30, 40 people a day and I will find a home for you to buy. Present them with the other option. And, and, and you, have, you have to be able to say to them, I am confident you're not going to be my first homeless seller. We will make this happen for you. We'll be able to negotiate one way or the other and we'll find you a place to go and then present them with the alternative, which is, Mr. Seller, I understand your concern. Yes, we have low inventory right now. And the advantage for you to sell your property now is because of the low inventory, you have an opportunity to sell your home for probably one of the highest prices in history right now the alternative and right now it may be a little bit challenging for you to find a home to buy and again i assure you that we will in this this way that way that way we'll we'll work it out for you but the alternative is that we wait for this market to slow down in in essence for 
for, for there to be more homes for sale. So you have a large pool of homes to choose from, but what's gonna happen in that case is, it's also gonna affect the sale of your home. So you won't be able to sell it for as high a price as you would now. And it may be very difficult or take a long time. And in some cases your property wouldn't even sell. So you have plenty of choices to buy, but you may end up having trouble selling your home. So you have to choose which kind of market do you want to be in. And personally, I if, if I was in your situation and I wanted to move, I definitely would want to sell my home for the highest possible price. So that's it. But in the end, you need to believe that because if you don't, if, you, if there's any hesitation in how you say it or what you say to them where you're actually concerned about them not finding a home, that's it. You're just confirming what the, the, the concern that they already have. So you're not going to be able to list that property. Thank you, Jackie. You're welcome. Can you list the uh, five steps? Listen intently, just to recap for everyone. So uh, in person, listen intently, repeat and approve, ask a question to get their attention handle the objection and close. So over the phone, you just skip step four because you don't really handle the objection. You just ask the question and close. Great, thank you, ma'am. Sure. Um, someone asks, what time do you start lead generation each day? It's probably a personal uh, choice, but what- Yeah, I, what I like to, how I like to answer that is speak with your team leader, broker, manager, and make sure that you know, depending on what part of, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming everyone here is in Florida, but depending what area you're in, you know, there may be some regulations about what time you can start. When calling new expireds, you want to start as early as possible, but you don't want to break any rules and, you know, end up in trouble. So perfect. Yeah. Uh, Tracy, what's your question? Hi there. Um, so Jackie, um, getting back to the commission, the discount commission. So, you know, I would say to the, you know, to the seller, you know, if you're looking for a professional who will market your home aggressively and negotiate the highest price and best terms for you from the time we list your home until we get to the closing table, I'm your realtor. Then what if they say to you, well, let me think about it. Okay, so Once Tracy, you that, you've lost it, right? Yeah, so remember, I'm going to go back to what I said a little bit earlier. The, the, they're sizing you up every step of the way, starting with the phone call, the pre qualifying, and the minute you park your car in front of their house. And ev like everything you say and everything you do, they're they're sizing you up in terms of like, how does this feel? Is this the right age? So it, it all adds up to when you ask them to sign. I mean, if they, if you have to say to them at the end, what you, you know, I know I use that script, but when you say that and they say, well, I have to think about it. Guess what? They, they don't see the value. They're questioning you. They're questioning your ability to do what they think needs to be done for them to sell this home quickly and for the most money possible, which is what every homeowner wants. That's what a motivated seller wants. So it's really not, even the objection at that point is not an isolated situation here. It's, it's uh, everything that's happened till that moment has led to this. So you got to think about that. Because like I said, you have to show up every step of the way as whoa stand out like big time the best no doubt this is it because when you do that people don't don't question it they just go okay let's do it people make decisions when they're excited about the future so every step of this from the phone call to the moment you ask them to sign so are they getting excited about how you work, what you do, what you can do for them? Because when they are and you, you put the pen and paper in front of them, they pick it up and they say, let's go. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I missed one question. So other than commission, what are other common or repeated objections that you get during uh, the listing presentation? Me, personally? Price. Price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even in a hot market, people want to, you know, I always say homeowners are never happy with like today's price. If, it, if it's a hot market, they want tomorrow's prices. If it's a seller's market, they want yesterday's prices. Like what is right now is it's like they, every homeowner wants more money for their house and their house is worth. Mm -hmm. So price is a big objection. I think that's the main one, honestly. It's not even commission. I brought up, I don't even know why I brought up commission. I didn't used to get a lot of commission objections. Mm -mm. No, when you bring value and you're right. confident, they really, they may ask and sometimes, and usually the answer is no, it's it's not negotiable or no, it's 6% or, or whatever it is. And mm -hmm. they, they, sometimes they just ask to ask and it's exactly. not, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. So, okay. So how do you show experience and confidence when you're new? Ask you fake it that. till you make it. So okay. here's how I, I say to my clients, pretend you're an actor or an actress. Okay. And your role in this movie is to play the part of a knowledgeable, confident real estate agent. You're really not, you're not even a real estate agent. You know, it's like an actor in a movie. I remember um, watching the Pirates of the Caribbean with my daughter. And one day she's watching a show on TV and Johnny Depp is being interviewed and he walks up to the host and they're greeting. And then they start, you know, the interview. And I'm like, whoa, Johnny, I mean, like Johnny Depp, like he's not Jack Sparrow. And I was so disappointed. I'm like, what happened? Like, where is that character? He's playing a role. Okay. And that's what you have to do. Can you do it? Oh yeah. You could totally do it. And when you show up like that, because when you, when you play this role of being confident, it, it causes you to become confident just because you're, you're like fake. You're like, whoa, yeah. Oh yeah. I'm confident. Oh yeah. I, this is great. It's going to build your confidence and obviously, you know, time on task and the, uh, the length of time and the experience and all of that. But in the beginning, you have, you have no choice. And by the way, you have to have high energy and enthusiasm. You cannot just be, oh, you know, no. High energy and enthusiasm is contagious. And it makes up for a lack of skill. So when you're new and you really don't know exactly what you're doing, high energy and enthusiasm and fake the confidence. Yeah. Oh yeah. You could totally do that. So pretend you're an actor. Love that. Um, okay. So Mia asks when they say on the phone, just bring me a buyer. And this will be our last question, by the way, guys, I'll put some more information in the chat. So box. Jenny, a role play with me. Okay. Yes. So you're on Facebook. Say, bring me a buyer. Yeah, that's great. What I really need, though, Jackie, is to sell my house. Could, do you have a buyer you could bring me? <laughs> Jenny, that is a great question. As I mentioned to you, I do work with a lot of buyers and sellers here in the area. So, so what I hear you saying is if I were to have a potential buyer, um, you, you would consider working with me in that case? Yeah, I mean, if, if you had a buyer, I mean, I need to sell my house. It's sort of right, yeah. right. I, I completely understand. And so, in that case, Jenny, it sounds like you would be willing to 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 pay a commission to a buyer's agent. Is that is that correct? Yeah, I think that. Yeah, what I understand yeah. is just kind of have to do that. Yeah. Right, right. So, so then in that case, it sounds like you're really looking to save the other portion of the commission that it would cost you to hire an agent to represent you. A mm -hmm. Am I understanding this correctly? Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so Jenny, here's what I want to ask you. Hypothetically speaking, if I can show you a way where I can more than make up for the commission that I charge, where in essence, my commission would be an investment for you. It would make you money, not cost you money. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you might be interested in looking at? 
Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Great. In that case, I'm, I'm glad I called you, Jenny. I'd love to set up a time for us to meet for just 20 minutes so I can show you how and why working with me would be a financial benefit to you. Would you be available today around three o'clock? Would four yeah. be better? You can show me that info. Let's go four o'clock. Yeah, that's it. So remember, over the phone, my goal is to set an appointment. I don't have to show the value right now. I don't have to tell her how. I just need to get that appointment. I got to meet with them. It's in person this conversation is going to happen, not over the phone. Right. 